Welcome back everybody to another lecture. Today's unit is source and use information on the hospitality industry. The unit code is SITHIND002. We will be going through all of the lecture slides today and we will be uh, working through all of the activities as well. So feel free to pause at any sections that you may need to do so or if you find any sections confusing or need to revise anywhere you're more than welcome to uh, replay this lecture recording at a later date or time this will be available in your student portal um, if you have any questions or uh, need some suggestions on anything you can get in touch with me at admin at wisemaneducation.com.au so I can uh, you know, guide you in the best possible way all right, let's get into it. So source and use industry information 1.1. Identify sources of information on the structure and operation of the hospitality industry. The hospitality industry consists of thousands of organizations, including hotels, restaurants, fast food outlets, cafes, pubs, bars and clubs consists of numerous suppliers, event companies, tourist services, delivery services, and transport companies. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that depends on the availability of leisure time and a disposable income. Sources of information on the hospitality industry may include the internet, uh, news websites, job websites, industry journals, reference books, trade and business to business magazines, newspapers and libraries, databases such as Australian Bureau of Statistics, directories, trade unions uh, such as United Voice. Sources of information may also include professional industry bodies, associations and organizations, lectures, seminars, workshops and conferences, uh, registered training organizations, developers of codes of conduct or ethics, industry accreditation operators, personal observations and experience, and legislation affecting the hospitality industry. Key characteristics of the hospitality industry. Key characteristics of the hospitality industry include hourly wages, long working hours, hard work, shift work, gratuities, regular opportunities for progression, uh, regular opportunities for professional development and a high turnover of staff. Structure of the hospitality industry. In the hospitality industry, there are basic service assistants such as waiters, waitresses, bartenders, cleaners, uh, delivery drivers, etc. Uh, there's also apprentice chefs, junior chefs, sous chefs, head chefs, shift supervisors, bar and restaurant managers, event coordinators and event assistants, general managers, owners, and directors of the business. All right, activity 1A, list five sources of information on the structure and operation of the hospitality industry. So um, if we're going to um, list five sources of information, so we could say five sources would be um, the internet, the industry journals, reference books, uh, trade and B2B magazines, newspapers, databases, directories, trade unions. Uh, there's so many, so just pick five. And the structure and operation of the hospitality industry essentially um, they'll consist of um, you know thousands of organizations, there's uh, you know hotels, clubs, pubs, all these different types of organizations, and essentially the uh, staff may include basic service staff, then chefs, shift supervisors, uh, managers, coordinators, and event assistants, general managers, and then owners and directors. Essentially, all right. List five characteristics of the hospitality industry. If we're thinking about the, you know, characteristics, uh, there's 
you know long hours that you have to do it's hard work it's labor there's shift work there's gratuities involved regular opportunities for progression regular opportunities for professional development and high turnover of staff um, and obviously most of the wages are hourly and it's not a salary based um, you know most of them aren't salary based job descriptions so yeah so include those in there as well uh, once you've done that activity come back and we can move on to the next one so when you're ready come back and we'll go on 1.2 access specific information of relevance to the hospitality industry to assist operational duties accessing information on the hospitality industry using specific internet search terms uh, subscribing to websites magazines newsletters networking with and contacting specific people using directories and social media websites such as LinkedIn Facebook Instagram to find specific information and resources you could do Yelp um, Google uh, attending specific lectures, seminars, and workshops or conferences. Contacting appropriate registered training organizations to provide bespoke training, so catered to whatever sector you would like. Information of relevance include economic statistics and figures. Reports on trends and developments within the industry. Reports on social significance of the industry. Career opportunities within the industry. Roles and general responsibilities of different jobs within the industry. List three ways of accessing specific information. So if we're going to go into accessing uh, you know, a specific type of information, we might wanna use specific internet search terms. We wanna subscribe to maybe more niche uh, websites or magazines. We might network with people within that industry. We might use online social media websites and directories such as LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, we could attend lectures and uh, maybe um, consult with RTOs and maybe uh, opt in for some of their training um, so we get you know more in-depth knowledge on those niches. Alright, uh, list three types of information on the hospitality industry. So there's so much that you can get from um, the hospitality industry. You know, this could involve statistics and figures. This could be about any upcoming or previous trends, any developments within the industry, uh, any new social, like why uh, social significance or any new developments in social significance for the industry, any career opportunities, um, roles and general responsibilities for different jobs in the industry and so much more, but you know, you only need to do list three. So include um, some of them there. If you've got some of your own ideas, you're more than welcome to put that in there as well. Once you're done, come back and we can move on to the next one. All right, obtain information on features of current and emerging hospitality products and services relevant to the job role. Obtaining information on hospitality products. Helpful websites with information on current and emerging products. So you've got uh, John Bateman, um, Hotel Products Direct, Hospitality Superstore, Hospitality Directory, uh, His Confie, The Hospitality Store, National Hotel Supplies. So there's so many more as well in there, but these are some of um, the emerging products and new products that might, you might be after, you could find there. All right, so for that, um, you wanna list five websites. You've got them there, pick five, or you can include some of your own as well, and you're good to go. All right, let's move on to the next one. Once you're done with that, 1.4, use knowledge of the hospitality industry and its products and services to enhance the quality of work performance Alrighty, so using information to enhance work performance means improving skills and productivity, producing food items to meet expectations, providing quality hospitality service, suggesting new and improved ways of doing things, working effectively with other uh, sectors of the industry, 
working according to ethical practices and legal requirements. So list five ways of using information to enhance the quality of your work performance. So, you know, we're um, improving skills and productivity, working according to ethical practices and legal requirements, suggesting new and improved ways of doing things, working effectively with other sectors of the industry, providing quality service, and producing food items to meet expectations of our customers. All right, list three tips you would give for using knowledge to enhance performance. So if you've got new, um, such as maybe um, new knowledge on a specific task or how to cut preparation times, you could implement those in your work practices, which you would essentially um, then cut your preparation times maybe by half which would ultimately put more money in your pocket. You could talk about hygiene procedures um, that have been newly discovered, which you can implement to maybe make your workplace and your customers, um, you know, dining experience much more hygienic. You could talk about things such as technology, which could help in the, you know, the communication factor, the workload, um, could be that you're using better m machines because technology has improved and maybe non-stick means actually non-stick so whatever you cook will never stick on that pan so it's a much easier form of washing compared to um, fry pans or uh, pots that say that they're non-stick but eventually you know they start sticking after a week of use so yeah include some of your ideas as well once you're done, come back to the lecture and we can move on. 2.1. Obtain information on laws specifically relevant to the hospitality industry and uh, work compliantly. So key legislation and guidelines include Food Standards ANZ Act of 1991, uh, sorry, Imported Food Control Act of 1992, and Food Standards Australia New Zealand Regulations 1994. List three cases, uh, key pieces of legislation and guidelines relating to the hospitality industry in Australia. So the key pieces of legislation, as we've talked about before, we've got the uh, Food Control Act, uh, Food Standards Australia Regulations 1994, uh, Food Standards uh, ANZ Act 1991. So once you've completed that, come back and we can resume with the next portion 2.2 seek information on industry quality and assurance schemes and use it to benefit own organization so Q&A helps prevent errors via systematic measurement comparison within a standard monitoring processes associated with feedback all right so what are quality assurance schemes Essentially, a quality assurance scheme is a way um, where you know you can um, put in a process or some sort of policy in your workplace where you um, you know want to prevent mistakes or defects while you're making your items or you're manufacturing your products and avoid any problems when delivering products or services to your customers at any point. So. Um, this is basically part of your quality management process or quality assurance process that you would do every day on a regular basis. Right, so list three aspects of your hospitality industry uh, quality assurance process. So if I was going to list three processes, what I would want to make sure is that the customer is satisfied. Um, you know, the customer's always right, I guess, at the end of the day. Even if we make mistakes, we will always try and go above and beyond. And we will want to make our customer happy so they can come back and be a returning customer of ours. We will always make sure that our product is to the highest standard and to quality and always avoid any ups and downs and have the same consistency throughout our product. Um, we always maintain a high standard of hygiene 
we make sure we're punctual, that we open and close on time. We make sure that um, all our uh, customer service staff are wearing their proper protective equipment. We make sure that all our staff members are well trained and equipped with the skills and knowledge that they would need to perform their task. We would make sure that our staff members would always um, you know, be aware of their environment and you know, make sure that the environment is always safe and secure so that our customers have a safe and indulgent experience. Once you're done with that, you can, um, you know, finishing what, um, whatever answers you've got in your mind as well. Come back to the lecture and we can move on to the next part. Alrighty. Um, 2.3. Access information on career planning and equal employment opportunity law. So, accessing information on career planning. Website with the information on career planning include fdhskillscouncil.com.au, myfuture.edu.au, Career Development Association of Australia, so cdaa.org.au, and yourcareerguide.com.au. Right, questions to ask. Questions to ask include how healthy is the industry, how many jobs are there, how much scope is there for progression? What is the average salary? And what kind of threats is the industry facing? So list three questions an individual should seek to address when accessing information on career planning. So we would ask those variety of questions, you know, how healthy is the industry? What kind of threats is the industry facing? What is the average sal salary for my position? How much scope is there for progression and how many jobs are there in the industry itself? And what is EEO and who is subject to it? So when we're looking at EEOs, it essentially the term EEO means equal employment opportunity. That means all people. So it is subject to all people who want to apply for a job in any industry. They must have an equal employment opportunity for that job role where all candidates must be assessed on the same scale with no favoritism or uh, having any preconceived notions or being um, you know racially profiled or anything like that or being discriminated against okay so once you've completed those activities come back and resume the lecture and we can move on to the next part 2.4 Obtain information on ethical industry practices and conduct day-to-day -day hospitality activities according to those practices. Ethical issues could include overbooking, mistreatment of others, whistleblowing, theft, racism, sabotage, misleading information in hotel, restaurant, menus, brochures and websites. Promoting an ethical culture. Promoting an ethical culture is likely to contribute to the long-term success of the organization, turns every customer interaction into an opportunity, can result in increased profits, better employee relations and management of efficiency, and assists in creating a positive environment. Activity 2D, what are ethics? So this is a very general question, so the answer would be something like, um, you know, ethics is something to do around with how an individual or a person or a society um, you know really holds its moral philosophy and direction so you know it's about um, how they feel and what morals principles they have um, which they would follow so for instance um, if I would say um, you know don't falsely claim outrageous things about a product so let's say eat this fruit and it will make you lose weight that is unethical because we know we're not li like we're not telling the truth so that we're lying so meaning because our society doesn't accept lying we are being unethical all right so um, yeah it's just a it's just a way to say how do we 
carry ourselves and how do we, you know, meet our societal standards um, on, you know, being uh, equal opportunity, being faithful, being truthful, and being supportive of one another. All right, list five ethical issues in the hospitality industry. There's so many, but you've got the whole employment and uh, wage issue. You've got, um, you know, under, you know, under providing and promising too much, uh, you know, on a certain product or it could be on a certain service. You could be doing, you know, things such as cancellation fees that are too excessive, um, could be hidden add-ons, could be, um, you know, adding extra uh, value onto a product that you, you know, add loopholes to so they can't actually take part in that extra valued item that you've added because they haven't, you know, been jumping for 10 hours through certain hoops. So that means that they're not, um, you know, uh, that offer is not available to them. So doing dodgy things, um, things, you know, such as wage theft, could be, um, you know, working people too hard or giving, um, you know, shifts that aren't, um, you know, legal time frame, could be that you fire people without notice could be your marketing is not ethical meaning that you you're promoting things that you don't actually have or things that don't actually meet the standard could be that you don't accept refunds and you're not giving any refunds to your customers things like that all right so list some of your stuff as well so you may to list five there of ethical issues so things that you find that are not ethical in the hospitality industry okay all right, number three, what are the benefits of promoting an ethical culture? Well, first of all, um, promoting an ethical culture means that everybody within the industry would be more responsible of what they're doing. So if we, you know, take the first step, that means others will have to follow. So there's benefits such as having better wages, having better shift timing, you know, not being so uh, tight on the way that we give tasks meaning that there's uh, a requirement of everybody to be multitaskers and not you know just sticking to one job and being happy but being stressed out and doing multiple jobs right so it benefits everybody it's much healthier for all of its uh, workers and people who are involved in the industry and essentially it allows the industry to grow and prosper further into the future. All right, so complete those activities. Once you're done, return back to the lecture and we can move to the next one. So 3.1, source and access information on current and emerging technologies that impact on organizational duties. 3.1, source and access information on current and emerging technologies that impact on operational duties. So current and emerging technologies include applications for electronic devices uh, and computers, computer-aided dispatch systems, food production systems, reservation systems, project management systems, new software for payment of wages and salaries, and tablets for sending orders through directly and social media websites. List five current and emerging technologies used in the hospitality industry. So we talked about them before. So you could talk about the social media involvement, online delivery, like Uber Eats and things like that, tablets for sending orders through, new software for payment and wages like STP, meaning single touch payroll, project management systems, reservation systems, food production systems, computer aided dispatch systems, applications for electronic devices and computers as well all right so include at least five there once you're done come back and we can move forward with the lecture so 3.2 use information on technology to suggest new and improved workplace practices so information on technology can be used to suggest 
new workplace practices concerning communication, efficiency, marketing, productivity, and customer service. So if we're listing three aspects of working practice, which could be influenced by information on technology, and we want to list three ways new technology can improve efficiency in the hospitality industry. So the three aspects of working practice we could, um, you know, which could be influenced by the information on technology, could be our communication, could be the way we perform, so meaning efficiency, the way we market ourselves, uh, the productivity that we produce, and our customer service. And list three ways we in new technology can improve efficiency in the hospitality industry. So first of all, uh, things like including wireless phones means you could, um, if you need to answer a phone call, your customers don't have to call the landline. They can call you on the mobile phone via distance and wherever you are, you can answer their phones and take their orders. Um, you're thinking about also online delivery. Customers don't have to come in to purchase anything anymore. They can purchase via websites or their phones and then you would create the product and a delivery driver would come to you and then deliver that item to the customer. Another thing would be such as your um, you know, marketing. You don't have to create physical you know, pamphlets anymore, physical menus. All you have to do is create a digital menu and you can um, you know, send that around through social media such as Facebook, Instagram, um, Yelp, Google, and people will just look at their phones for what menu items you have in your restaurant. And you don't have to print, so there's no um, costs in printing and paper and all those sorts of things. All right, so I've listed three for you. You can list some of your own as well. Once you're done with that activity, come back and we can move on to the next one. 3.3, use current and emerging technologies in the day-to-day -day work activities. Current and emerging technologies used in hospitality industry includes, um, wait, did I do that? Uh, yeah, so electronic devices, dispatch system, social media. Um, so now, uh, list three current and emerging technologies used in the hospitality industry. So tablets, um, software, social media websites like Facebook, Instagram, and all that. All right, 4.1, identify and use a range of opportunities to update current and emerging knowledge of the hospitality industry. So we could be doing mentoring schemes, networking, using social media, following blogs, subscribing to websites and magazines, taking part in training courses, seminars and workshops, or going to conferences, exhibitions and festivals. So list five ways of updating knowledge. So this simple, you know, taking tr on training, going to conferences, uh, subscribing to websites and journals and magazines, following blogs, uh, using social media, being mentored and networking within the industry. Uh, list three benefits of staying up to date with the latest industry developments. Well, you want to know what's going on so you can increase your productivity. You want to be in touch with the trends and the statistics that are happening because you don't want to fall behind so that your customers go somewhere else. You want to stay competitive so that uh, your cu customers you know, um, can have a better or at least some sort of um, reasoning why they would choose you. If there are other people who are offering better deals than you, then you're just making it easier for the customer to choose them. And if you're not being competitive, then um, your customers will just choose the alternative and not you. And another thing could be that you're innovating, reducing costs, you're you know, producing more pro um, productivity, meaning more profit for your business, because you will know how to implement those new technologies, new ideas, new food items, that those people are into or your customers are into, meaning ultimately more money in you or your business owner's pockets. All right, so complete that uh, once you're ready, come back and we can move on to the next one. So 4.2, monitor current issues and trends for the industry. Monitoring current industry issues and trends. Issues and trends include labor and skill shortages, advances in technology, a liquor license, 
bullying and harassment in the workplace. So list three issues and trends in the hospitality industry. So we could be talking about bullying, harassment, about liquor, about new cultures emerging such as halal and you know having to cater to that, advances in technology. Um, we could be talking about labor shortage and skill shortages in Australia for our industry of hospitality. All right, so mention those. Once you're done, come back and we can move on to the next one. 4.3, share updated information with colleagues. Methods of sharing information include emails, newsletters, posters, staff training, meetings, seminars, and workshops. Why is it important to share industry news with colleagues? So it's really important because you want everybody to know what's going on. You want everybody to be updated on the recent news, technologies, any updates, any you know, uh, new findings or any shortcuts that we could use to implement and better our business. Um, and essentially we want our staff to be developing themselves and professionally keeping up to date to the industry. List three ways of sharing information. We could do it by email. We can do it by um, the uh, you know newsletter, posters, staff training, meetings, seminars, workshops. There's so many. Just list three. And three benefits of sharing information. Um, you can critique the information. You can have more ideas created. You could um, essentially implement um, better systems for your business which could allow more productivity your staff would be professionally developing themselves learning new things and skills and how to benefit um, the business how to learn um, tasks in a better format or learning new menu items that could um, create more business opportunities so many things all right so as this would be your last activity uh, I hope that you have completed your learner workbook by now, so submit that to your trainer. Once you have done that, I would um, you know, essentially move on to the multiple choice questions, which will be available in your student portal. So complete that as well. Your, learn, uh, um, your trainer will let you know if you have any issues with your learner workbook. If not, then they will guide you through the other three assessments which is the skill assessment knowledge assessment and the performance assessment these will ultimately be scheduled and your trainer will be guiding you through them if you need to know when look at your timetable which will have the most up-to-date information if you have any questions or any feedback don't hesitate to get in touch with me um, you know if you have um, any ideas or um, if you just have you know issues with some of these sections you're more than welcome to revisit this lecture recording at a further a future date as this will be available in your student portal so feel free to replay any sections or any parts as many times as you like and hopefully i'll see you on the next one